settle the debate, which is, should you use aces? For the past couple of weeks, I've been down a rabbit hole trying to learn and understand four letters which seem to have started wars across the 3D community. A bit of context, Octane has introduced an Aces tone mapping button, so you can now work with Aces with the click of a button. However, the more I started thinking about it, the more I wanted to understand, who is this for? Why is it there in the first place? And more importantly, as I learn to become a better 3D designer, do I need to use it? Now there are much better videos and articles that go into explaining these things in amazing detail which I'll link below. However, there's a whole heap of confusing information out there. On one side, you have people raving about how brilliant Aces is and how it will drastically improve your scenes. And on the other side, you have people saying you should avoid it like the plague or use AGX instead, or only use it if you know what you're doing. To add to this confusion, a lot of information regarding Aces isn't specific to Octane. To help me understand all of this, I was put in touch with some incredible 3D artists who allowed me to pick their brains to ask them some extremely stupid questions, all in the help of being able to shed light on what can be a crazy, confusing topic in this community. So what's the point of clicking the Aces button? Why have Octane introduced it? Why is it called Aces Tone Mapping? And should I name my firstborn child Aces? To answer all of these questions, first we need to rewind and cover off some basic concepts. I promise this won't take long, and I'm just trying to oversimplify to make the concept more palatable, with some dodgy analogies along the way. Grab a coffee and let's get into it. ACES is the industry standard for interchanging image files and a way to create better light in 3D. It's also a set of rules for encoding data and managing a very specific color workflow. Basically a box, a file format that all the data as low of resolution to as high as resolution as you can goes into this standard data format. And then you do all your manip manipulation, your editing, and then you push a button and you get all your different deliverables. I mean, that's like the goal of ACES. So we have one pipeline. To make this pipeline work, they had to introduce a color space. But what is a color space? This is the CIEXY diagram. I like to call it the CXE diagram and it's commonly used to compare between different color spaces and shows us all the colors our eyes can see. A color space describes all the available colors in a subset and the color gamut is all the colors that a device can display. The one we care about is the slightly smaller brother of ACES called ACES CG, the color space used for 3D work. Now nearly all computer screens are calibrated to use the sRGB color space which has been a standard since 1999, first used on CRT monitors. Today's screens are much more powerful than when this standard was introduced, but for consistency, they are all calibrated to use this color space. This helps to make images look the same across all devices, but we run into issues when rendering a 3D image in sRGB. To get the most dynamic range possible out of an image, 3D artists use something called a linear workflow. Put in layman's terms, this is done by removing a curves adjustment that is put on an sRGB image using a process called gamma correction to make the image's relationship with light linear. Hence the name linear workflow. ACES proposes a new color space, which has a much wider field of view on all of these colors. To use an analogy, Think of sRGB as your standard family car, for example, a Honda Jazz. It is widely adopted, reliable, and suitable for most driving conditions and roads. Aces is like owning a Bugatti Veyron. Head to head, there's not really a competition, but for day-to-day -day living and driving, a Bugatti Veyron would be horrendous. Imagine trying to do your food shopping in your Veyron. For that, I would rather use my Honda Jazz. This analogy helps me to drive through a misconception straight out of the gate you will never view a raw ACES file, much like my chances of owning a Veyron. Whatever you're making, you will always be looking at your ACES file through the limitations of what your screen is capable of displaying. In our specific case, it's sRGB. So even though you're driving the Bugatti Veyron, you're stuck with your Honda Jazz for your food shopping. One of the benefits of ACES is that it encompasses so many other color spaces. For example, 
OLED phone screens don't use sRGB, they use another color space called DCI-P3. This means if I use the ACES workflow and then transform the image to be viewed correctly on both an sRGB screen and an OLED phone screen, I don't have to worry that it's going to look weird on either device. So I can drive my Bugatti to make my image and then drive my Honda Jazz and also buy a Toyota Prius and I'll still be able to go food shopping and not go hungry. Being in this wide colour space also brings other advantages, such as being able to work in that linear workflow that I mentioned earlier, a better way of preserving highlight information and richer colours overall. Now, this is where things can get tricky, so before we go any further, we need to talk about Octane. Octane is a spectral renderer, which means it calculates light using wavelengths. This is what makes it so beautiful and photographic in nature. It has the power to not only calculate all the colours our eyes can see, which is the visible light spectrum, but infrared and ultraviolet light wavelengths too. In practice, this means that Octane can already calculate all of the colours available, even more so than the colour gamut that Aces CG covers. In Octane, since it's a spectral renderer, it never was limited in terms of colour gamut. It's just, in Octane, in spectral, colour gamut is kind of endless. In order for Octane's calculations to be viewed properly on our sRGB screens, Octane will squeeze all of these available colours into a working range that can be viewed on our screens in a nice way. This process is called tone mapping. Comparing this to our analogy, Octane is an F1 car. You can think of tone mapping as a way of getting out of this F1 car that we own and into our Honda Jazz. The way that Octane does this tone mapping is just one way of squeezing all of that colour information into our sRGB screens. But this is just one interpretation of doing this. Another way of doing this is by using the ACES tone mapping, the button that is now available in Octane. So going back to the analogy, going from an F1 car to a Honda Jazz and a Bugatti Veyron to a Honda Jazz gives us different results. The way that ACES does this transform of its colours presents a really nice way of dealing with extremely bright lights and super saturated colours compared to how Octane goes from its own unlimited colour space to how they show up on our screen. This can be called the ACES look, but I wanted to understand why does the ACES look look good and for that I had to turn to an expert. Dino Muhic is an incredible 3D artist who was generous enough to sit down with a beginner like me to describe not only why it looks good, but where that look is coming from. I'm just trying to figure out why does it look good? <laughs> I don't really get why it looks good. It well, just it, looks it, like magic to me. It looks good because it has a very specific way of tone mapping highlights. That's, that, that's what I would say. Aces has a really specific way to deal with really those bright lights and colors and bringing it down and tone mapping them uh, without burning out the picture or burn, having burned out pixels in your scene, which we usually would see from old render engines. Having that dynamic range and dealing correctly with that dynamic range like film would do is something that, that ACES brings to the table. I mean, people before ACES were used to having this highlight compression slider in the Octane camera attack. Yes. And sometimes people tend, I see, often see when I get projects from people, um, hand it over to me. Uh, that slider is always put to uh, one to to one hundred percent full on because they're trying to get those highlights down because to they're too too hard. Range into the scene. Yeah, yeah, into the scene to compress it down um, because their highlights are too uh, too too harsh. Uh, so I always see that people are using that slider a lot, and the slider is something very specific to Octane because Octane always had those. Um, that, that wide color gamut and had a way to deal it, uh, to, to express those lights. But ACES has its own highlight compression in that kind of uh, way, and it just deals differently with, with very saturated lights, but it also um, brings you to, to a point where you're like, okay, well, if it, if it has this very specific look with very saturated lights, perhaps I can try to, to use those more or um, to, to see how, how my scenes would look like if I, if I use those lights, which I never really thought about using before. Well, now that I can use those with ACES, it might actually add to my scene, add to, add to the look of my scene. Uh, you can play a bit more and get more into those extremes and might you actually get 
get to a result that you didn't expect before or even try to get there before ACES. So this ACES look can give you a different way to work with extremely bright or oversaturated colors that looks good. Now, as we're on this topic, Dino did some further research on this, which exposes a grand misconception of where people think this ACES look is coming from. I think it's, it's more like a, the, the misconception about uh, ACES. And everyone's like, okay, you need to use an ACES DG EXR. And then you use, for example, OCO, OCIO, um, Open Color IO, to transform from ACES CG to your sRGB output, which is or your Rec 709 output, which is the usual way you would do because you're just working for a screen or for web or mm -hmm. whatever, um, and to, to get that specific look and that specific tone mapping uh, out of uh, the ACES tone mapping into your picture. What I found out was that this is actually not true. In Octane, you can render out a linear sRGB EXR, import it into your comp. And then you use the ACES config file and say, this is a linear EX, sRGB EXR. Please make me an SR, sRGB output. And it will look the same as an ACES CG one. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not, the magic is not in it being an ACES CG EXR. The actual ACES look comes from the config file. How it deals with data and exporting to actual sRGB output. It's filling out the dynamic, the, the gamut of that specific color profile and everything that's exceeding that, all the colors that are out, out of that bound, boundary of sRGB are just stored in the EXR in negative numbers. So you can and always access that data if you need to. Yeah, the is data is there. The right. data is there and it's just in a negative space. And the tools fortunately know how to deal with that. So when you're working with R&DR or render and you want to have your ACES look, you can just check that uh, ACES tone mapping checkbox and you will have it already baked in. Or you can just render actually whatever you want uh, as long as it's an EXR and just use your comp tool to transform with the ACES config. That's the most important thing. You have to have use the ACES config file because the actual look is in there. It's describing the, the, the description how to convert from A to B from the linear XR to the actual sRGB output is in there. So we're just using that and say, okay, convert please. And then you get the ACES look. However, just like with most things, the grass isn't always greener if you're working with ACES. Some of the main issues that people have is with brand colors. Here's Dino to explain. If you add a very bright light uh, and you have like a Coca-Cola can or something, you have a specific Coca-Cola red, those colors will get changed in the process because you're applying so much light to it. You're pushing the extremes and you're going into the, that uh, really bright area and it's going trying to flatten that out again, bring it back to something visual that you can see and it's not over bright or it's not bur burnt out. And in that process, it will always change a bit. So I would be really cautious with um, brand colors. Sometimes you can just fix it in a post. You can okay. export a crypto mat and sometimes I do just do that. I'm like, okay, that color will probably look a bit different. So I'm going to make sure I have a mask for it and I can fix it in the post. You should always check those colors later on when they come out and when you're doing your output transform. Yes. Uh, that those colors are still the actual brand colors because they will, if you're using extreme lighting, they will probably change in, in terms of hue and uh, saturation and everything. So this is, this is a point where we have to keep in mind. Now, when you start researching on how to actually use ACES, one of the first things you'll see is something called an input device transform. But here's Dina to explain why, in Octane at least, it's not that much of an issue. We don't have this hassle in Octane that we have to pre-convert any textures. Before it was like, well, if you want to use a texture in an ACSG environment, you have to pre-convert it from whatever it was before to the ACSG color profile, then you can use it correctly. We never had this problem in Octane. Octane was always smart enough to use those sRGB textures because it's having its spectral um, endless format anyway of dealing with colors. We never had the problem that we had to pre-convert textures or something like that. Uh, so we're not stuck with it if you want to choose as we're not really stuck in your scene when you start from the beginning to use ACES that you're stuck in it. So it's great to know that if I do want to work in ACES in Octane, I'm not stuck in that workflow 
and if I want to revert to how it looked before, all I have to do is untick that checkbox. However, this brought me to my next point, which is, when should you actually turn on the checkbox? If I'm starting a scene from scratch, is it something that I should leave on? Yes, uh, I would. I mean, yeah, I, this is how I work. Um, since it's changing so much in your scene color-wise, it um, wouldn't be smart to build your scene and your shading and lighting in a specific way, and then later on to turn that button on because stuff will change a lot. And um, so I would usually already work with it turned on, except when I'm really sure that it will mess up with some brand colors and stuff. But otherwise, when if I'm building Normal scenes, I usually have it turned on from the beginning and I'm trying to incorporate it already from the start, yes. Now, when I first started researching, it was obvious that Aces was used within the VFX workflow, but I'm not doing VFX. I haven't got to the stage where I'm comping my scenes over footage. So I just wanted to ask, is it something that I need to learn? So say I am just creating a whole scene in Cinema 4D mm -hmm. and I just want to use Octane. Mm -hmm. Does that mean I should use Aces? Well, um, you can use ACES for that if you want the ACES look. Does it help you just to deliver or to, to play around in Octane and render out beautiful images? It can if you, if you want to use the look of it. It's kind of, it's, you could say it's kind of a lot um, because you're really just using it to convert those very harsh lights. It that doesn't bring really much to the table or doesn't look very, very much different if you're not going into those extremes. If you're working just with a simple HDR, which doesn't have really extreme values for like a strong sun or something, but once you start pushing it, once you start pushing your lights and everything, then the more the ACES tone mapping um, effect you will, you will notice. So now I'm clued up on everything to do with ACES, all I want to figure out now is how do I get that look into my scenes? No, with, with 2022.1 uh, 20, uh, and that ACES tone mapping checkbox, uh, you can bake in your ACES look into your PNGs, 8-bit um, PNGs, 16-bit PNGs, whatever. Um, and you can also bake it actually into the EXR2 if you want. You can have both now. Um, you can put, put your scene onto render and say, use the same scene to render out an 8-bit PNG sequence of the finished final look, but also render from the same file the EXR, um, which is untone mapped, which is unclamped, and then having that option to for comp purposes, yes. um, which is not clamped in any way, to then get to the same result later on. So we now know how to get the ACES look into our scenes, but I couldn't resist asking Dina one final question. Should you use ACES? It's hard to say. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I would I, I would say yes because I like the specific look it gives. It gives you. Um, it's really easy to use now, so um, I don't think I don't see a reason why you shouldn't try it at least in your scene. Yeah. To see if it brings you any value, I would say yes. Try it out. Uh, hit that button um, and see if it brings you any value. If it if you like the tone mapping it gives you. And um, you have to still have, have a non-destructive way of working because you can export your EXRs, you can render out your EXRs. If you already work with it in mind, you will probably have a much nicer picture in the end than if you don't, um, if you use it, if you use its strengths. So yeah, I would say try it, off, try it out. But if you, if you see any problems with it, um, especially with dealing with brand colors, and you don't want to do the hassle of bringing everything in line later on, uh, I can see why some would choose to not use it. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's enough of an answer. It's really hard to say. So when I first started this video, I did say that we were going to be going down a rabbit hole and now you're all here with me. That's if you made it this far into the video anyway. But really this project for me has just been standing on the shoulders of giants. I cannot give my biggest thanks enough to Dino, to Paddy, to Carmichael, Giles, Mathis, and everyone at Render Token, as well as all the incredible resources out there there is to try and understand this topic. And so I leave you with a question. Are you going to use ACES? Please drop a comment down below and we'll talk about it there. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for joining me down this rabbit hole.